Hello everyone, welcome back to another repair video. Today, I know it's been a while since I've put one out, but we're going to do a full length video here. This is a Robotron, a matching set Robotron board set. It's uh, all matching numbers. 580814, 580814, 580814, 580814, and 580814, and I do have the power supply as well. Let me grab that. Power supply. Okay. Here's the heat sinks for the power supply. Let me just open it up. That should have a sticker on it as well. And it does 580814. So everything's matching in the power supply board itself, I'm sure I have over here as well. Maybe. Okay, dropping stuff. Well, I got a box here. What's in the box? What's in the box? What is in the box? It's an unboxing on classic arcade repairs. It's the power supply board and another ROM board. So let me get these situated. So we have a complete, and I mean complete, Rollatron electronics set. I do not see a sticker on this one. There's one right here, but it looks like it's, I mean, this looks like it's rebuilt. This power supply looks really nice. It's got the... Uh, Hot mod on it, new parts here, new parts there, new parts everywhere. It's even got a little spider nest fuzz to go along with it, you know. Looking good. So we'll test that all out. So we've got our power supply, we've got an extra ROM board. We got some extra ROMs. I gotta go back over my notes to find out exactly what's going on with all of this. Which we will, we'll do that. But I know the Robotron's getting repaired and the first thing I see with this Robotron is we got some corrosion damage here on this. Let me go ahead and grab the camera. We got some corrosion going on over here, which needs to be cleaned up. It comes all the way up here, and it's undoubtedly corroded these sockets. These sockets are probably all corroded to a degree more so over here they've all got to be replaced all the sockets will be replaced this is a uh, kind of a cool deal this board belongs to a self-described Robotron marathoner so we're going to make sure that this board set runs without fail for hours upon hours upon hours until something fails on it of course which is inevitable kind of with 40 year old electronics something's going to give but I will get it to where it's running perfect when it leaves my place here my shop so um what I have been told about this is the controls don't work 
this board has an issue. I believe this works with another board, but not with this one. So I think the problem follows this MPU board. Um, we need to replace headers. We need to replace caps. We need to replace sockets. Looks like it's got a new cable. Both of these have new cables. Uh, we'll recap the soundboard. We'll make sure that the soundboard's working proper. Replace all the headers. Now, we do have these 4164 adapter sockets. Little socket adapters, and I don't know if I like that or not. And here's why. If I put new sockets in this board, this will be able to run 4116 or 411 or 4164 with just a little mod to the back of the board here not even cutting a trace or anything yeah you'd have to cut this cut a cu couple of these pins off but the sockets would still be good if we go and I replace all of these sockets and then I plug one of these into every socket it's gonna ruin the sockets and it's just gonna only be able to use the 4164s in those sockets so I'm thinking I might should just solder these right into the board if we're going to go that route otherwise I would prefer to replace all of the sockets not use those put 4164s in the board and modify the header over here All right, well, I don't remember exactly where I was, but picking up. Yeah, my brother just kind of stopped over, so I hung out with him for a little bit. And now we're going to get back to looking at this. First things first, right off the bat, this has, it, all these sockets need to be replaced. This corrosion needs to be cleaned up. So you can see it's kind of gotten into this area right here. So what I want to do is kind of wipe this area out, clean it, and then repopulate that area. Clean along the edge. Clean along this edge. Replace all these sockets. And yeah, we'll make this, replace these sockets of course. All the headers, caps and do all that make that nice and good this one this board we will go ahead and replace all of these sockets caps headers <clears throat> yeah so all right very well first things first i'm going to start stripping this board kind of put this stuff off to the side we don't need this right now we're going to concentrate on this guy right here first and foremost. And by the way, I am not, I'm, I'm getting, I'm in the process of taking these out. And these sockets are trash. These are, these sockets really have to go. But what this board set was doing, I don't, I, I think I hit on this. It was given the old 1-3 whatever RAM error. It would occasionally boot and the controls didn't work. And it was verified that it was this board that was the problem and not the widget board, maybe. Either way, I, I, have, I have some of those controller boards that I know are good, so we'll deduct what is actually the problem. Yeah, so I'm just in the process taking this apart. And, uh, yeah, I'll come back when I've got this thing all stripped apart and ready to put back together. All right, I got all of the crap out. Stripped this section down. And getting these ground holes clear was a pain in the ace. But I got it. I got everything clear. 
and getting these clear was a total pain. Those caps right there that go over to the ground. If you don't have the right tools, you're not going to get those cleared. But I got all that cleared. I'm going to take a break because... Oh, I forgot to remove these caps. No, well, that's trivial. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a break because... Uh, Boy, you know, you're not going to, you're not, your fume extractor is not going to extract every one of those fumes. You're going to breathe a little bit of that stuff and it just kind of makes you feel like crap. So take a little break, come back and I've got all the, I've got all the solder cleared out. I need to clean this up. I'm going to mask this. I'm going to put some masking tape over this sticker, clean the board up pretty good. And then I need to uh, remove this corrosion I'll, I'll get my fine grit sandpaper and just go over it until it's clean i'll re -tin. and yeah that'll be done okay all of the corrosion is gone S smooth as can be looking good Jump all the way through here over through here it was good it was just you know it, it hadn't really dug into the copper it was pretty much just surface corrosion which came off pretty easy and the board looks awesome now both sides. I got it all off of both sides. All the way, it was all the way up through to here. So I got it all all of the corrosion off of there. All the way up through here. And here, over into here. So I'll go ahead and retin Retin the board and then clean that off. Retin re both sides, all the copper, and then wash that off. And this thing will be good to go. Repopulate all this, these parts, and be good to go. All right. And I did remove this stuff, by the way. The power header and the caps, I removed that. And I got this thing retinned, and I got to say, I think this looks incredible. I'm extremely happy with the way this has come out. Got a nice layer of tinning on there. And the back side as well. All the way up. And all the way up the side. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. No more corrosion. So I'm just going to get to populating this. I removed this ram as well. Um, when I had the desoldering gun out, I went ahead and removed this because I created something that I'm going to put on here. It's a little battery module. And I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to put that on here. 
yeah this looks great so now we just got to get into repopulating this all the new sockets and everything so this board will be good to go all right well i have to say i am beyond pleased with how this board has come out i got that all populated all new parts i didn't reuse except for the crystal i reused the crystal everything else is new the diodes the Schottky diode the 5817 diode in the middle there all new new parts and I've got my decouplers put back in over here I've got this populated with new caps new header there these sockets replaced and that socket replaced as well it looks great now what I'm gonna end this right here because I need to contact the owner of this are we going to put in those these things I'm thinking I mean if these will fit it might be a good idea to solder these right into the board yeah no I don't like that that's not a good idea that is not a good idea um, I'm gonna put regular sockets in the board because if these if one of these ever happens to get damaged at all, these are going to be harder to remove than a socket. Socket. So, yeah, these things, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I would rather not use these because these are socket destroyers. Once you plug this into a socket, you have to use it no matter what. There's no going back from that. Whereas I would rather clip a couple pins off of this. This pin. Clip this pin and this pin off. The, the two on the ends. And then you can jump on the back. You just, you just connect these two together. These three. Those three pins you connect together. And then you can put... 4164s in the board. And if you wanted to revert back to 4116s, you would only have to replace the header instead of all of those sockets. You know? So it's just it's better that way. Do a little mod. You don't have to cut any traces or anything. You just have to clip up a couple pins off of this. And then you can safely just put this into any Williams cabinet. You don't have to modify the cabinet harness at all. You can plug it right in with four 164 rams and you're good to go. So that's that's how I would rather see it done. So that's how I'm going to do it. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead put new sockets in this board. And uh, that'll do. Let me go ahead and get that done. And this is what it looks like done. I did just decide to put the uh, the coin cell battery holder back in and put a, a copper bar. I tinned the copper bar and soldered it across for ground. Yeah, we got our new sockets all around. I put these chips back in. I'm going to test all of the RAM and this RAM. But yeah, we've got this all cleaned up nicely just looking nice and beautiful yeah Just looks great but these 4116 ram that were in this 
are a matching dash four set. I'll show you. You want to focus, focus. Or is that dash two? I got to look these over. I thought they were all dash four. That's dash two. Dash two, I believe, is 150 nanoseconds. I'm not exactly sure, though. Come on. Focus. Yeah, see, that one's dash four. Yeah, these are mismatched. These are not, that's not a matching set of RAM. So, yeah, we need to put in a matching set. And I'll see what he sent. The customer did send along some RAM. So we'll take a look at that. And go from there. Regardless, I'm going to test all of the RAM that he sent. And make sure they're all good. We're going to know... We're going to start with known values, known good RAM. Now these, I don't know if these are good, but I'll know the symptoms. If they're not good, I'll know exactly what it looks like. But uh, yeah, we're going to probably go with the 4164 RAMs and modify the header to accommodate that. Because that is not a matching set of RAM. It looks like it, but a lot of them are dash 4 and a lot of them are dash 2. And that's a big timing mismatch. It's going to cause issues. So I'll go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and end this one right here. I got a lot of testing to do on the RAMs, and uh, the test for 4164s is really slow on the Inquisitor. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload this as part one. We've got this thing looking incredibly good. Do a before and after side by side would be cool. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned. All right. Yeah, I know I said this was over, but I went ahead. I tested all of the RAM. They were all good. Tested my static RAM. It's good. Hooked it up to the ROM board, turned it on, booted straight to zero. That is awesome. There's our factory settings restored screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset button. And it should boot right into Robotron. There it is. Excellent. Yeah. Now we got a nice, 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 nice new board here. I mean, not new, but you know what I mean. All rebuilt right here. No more corrosion. I'm using the adapter. It, um, customer had an adapter for power, so I'm using that. That's the 4164 RAM adapter. And these are all matching 150 RAM. And yeah, you can see it boots straight to zero every time. Good to go. So now what I have to do, this board's good to go. Now I've got to refurb this board. I'm going to be doing the caps, the uh, ROM sockets, these special sockets here. And then we have to troubleshoot what's going on with the little widget board, why there's no controls. So, And we'll, we'll do that, no big deal. But the video and the processing part of this board, no, I, this might have an issue with uh, 
controls, you know, with the uh, interfacing to this board. Might have an issue on here somehow, so yeah, we'll figure all that out. One step at a time. We've got this thing booting and running good. So now I'm going to stop and upload this video as part one done. Part two will be going through this board and all the other stuff. All right. Stay tuned.